in the only oral anticoagulants used. New substances with anticoagulant effects referred to as new oral anticoagulants have recently been introduced. The new oral anticoagulants represent novel direct acting medications that are selective for one particular factor, either thrombin or activated factor 10A. So these are the two mechanisms by which the newer oral anticoagulants act. Now this picture will tell you very effectively, this is vitamin K antagonist. It has got an action against factor 7A and it also has an action against factor 2, that is prothrombin. And it has got an action against factor 9 and also has an action against factor 10. So 2, 7, 9, 10. All these four factors, their actions are blocked by warfarin, which is a vitamin K antagonist by preventing the uh, conversion of these factors from their inactive state to active state. Now, the dabigatron, which was first introduced as the oral anticoagulant, was a direct thrombin inhibitor. So you see this direction is acting only on this particular thing. These three categories of drugs, Everaxaban, Epixaban, and Eroxaban, they are all acting again factor 10A. So this diagram will be very easy to draw. So you draw the intrinsic pathway, get the numbers 12, 12A, 11, 11A, 9, 9A, 10, 10A. So it's easy to remember that. And the extrinsic pathway 7A, which is also acting along with the tissue factor. Ultimately, they also stimulate the factor 10 to 10A. So this is an important intermediate step, which combines both the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway. And the final common pathway is conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin by thrombin. So this, thing, this picture will be very useful in the exam to mention how these drugs act. Now the first drug, Dabigadran, is a synthetic small molecule. It is a hirudin analog that exhibits univalent binding to only one of the three thrombin sites. So the drug goes and binds itself to the thrombin and blocking its effect of you know, converting the fibrinogen to fibrin. And uh, it is a direct thrombin inhibitor, factor 2A, that prevents conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin, which forms a clot. And this is a prodrug. The important thing is dabigadran etoxylate. This is the salt, etoxylate of dabigadran, which is a prodrug, which is rapidly transformed after oral ingestion by the hepatic processing into the active drug. So directly it doesn't act, it is like uh, your uh, dimorphine getting converted to morphine to produce the analgesic effect. So that is how it is also is a pro-drug. The trade name for this is Pradaxa, and the drug can be administered with or without food and is rapidly absorbed. Its absorption after oral administration is only very low, 6 to 7 percent, and it is independent of the dose of the prodrug. So, even if you give a very high dose, the prodrug is only absorbed up to 6 to 7 percent. And the mean plasma terminal half life is 12 to 14 hours, and this is again independent of the dose. So, whether you give 75 milligram or 110 milligram or 150 milligram, the half life is the same. And the absorption and bioconversion of dabigadran occur in enterocytes, hepatocytes, and portal vein. And dabigadran does not inhibit cytochrome P450. Therefore, it is a potential for drug-to-drug -drug interaction is very low. And it exhibits predictable dose response and therefore does not require protein coagulation monitoring. The primary route for dabigatran elimination is renal, 80% in the human being. And at a dose of 150 milligram, it's associated with lower rates of stroke and systemic embolism. So the, the people who have a tendency for cerebral uh, embolism or thromboembolism and systemic embolism, they are stroke so I mean the uh, dose is 150 milligram is quite effective. 
So this is how the drug is presented. You can see there are three different preparations: 75 milligram, 110 milligram, and 150 milligrams. And the river of Saban is an oxo lead known the derivative and the selective direct factor 10A inhibitor. And activated factor 10A plays an important role in the coagulation cascade because it links the intrinsic and the extrinsic coagulant pathways as a rate limiting step. The trade name for Rivaraxaban is Geraldo. There are other manufacturers with different names are also there now, but this is the first one to come out. And it is non-basic compound that is rapidly absorbable and has a bioavailability compared to dibigadran. With almost 10 times more bioavailability is there. Dabigadran is only 6 to 8 percent, whereas here it is 60 to 80 percent after oral administration. <clears throat> Pharmacokinetics is dose dependent with uh, maximum occurring in 2.5 to 4 hours after oral administration. And the metabolism of the drug occurs in the liver primarily via cytochrome isoenzyme CYP3A4. And 30 percent of river band is excreted unchanged in the urine and through fecal elimination. These are the two routes of elimination and can be administered with food or within two hours of eating. There is no need for after food alone. Half-life elimination is approximately four to seven hours and only 2.5 milligram twice daily dose is licensed for secondary prevention in acute coronary syndrome in combination with standi, standard antiplatelet therapy if renal parameters are normal. So nowadays they use this for uh, ACS also along with your uh, clopidogrel and aspirin which are mainly antiplatelet agents. This is also being now included in the armamentarium uh, for treating ACS patients for prevention of further thrombus formation. And mild hepatic disease does not result in any clinically relevant differences. Even though it is mainly uh, metabolized in the liver, the uh, mild degree of hepatic dysfunction does not preclude the usage of this particular drug. And it is available in 2.5 milligram, 10 milligram, 15 milligram, and 20 milligrams. So four preparations are available, which are all filling coated tablets. Coming to Apexiban, it's another novel or newer oral anticoagulant, reversible direct factor 10A agonist, antagonist. Trade name is Eliquis. <clears throat> the Apexiban rapidly absorbed after oral administration and bioavailability is approximately 66%, just like your River Oxoban, it is also highly absorbed and bioavailability is good. Half life is 8 to 15 hours, which is slightly longer acting than the previous drug. Apexiban also is metabolized in the liver by cytochrome pathways, again the same enzymes, isoenzymes, and very has the smallest renal clearance. So even in patients with the compromised renal function, you can safely use this drug. And the dose is 5 milligram twice daily. So it is available as 2.5 and 5 milligram tablets. And the third one, Edoxoban, oral direct specific again, factor 10A inhibitor. And approximate 10,000 fold selectivity for factor 10A over thrombin. So this is a more powerful factor 10A inhibitor. There are two names available in the trade uh, trade names Savasia and Lixiana. Doxaban is rapidly absorbed with estimated bioavailability 58.3%, so almost equal to Apexiban. And approximately one third is eliminated via kidney and the remainder via feces. So there is a fecal elimination also. And this is available as 30 milligram, 15 milligram, 30 milligram, and 60 milligram. So, Luciana is available as 30 milligram. The other three, uh, other brand is available as 15, 30, and 60 milligrams. Now, clinical indications for their use approved for various thromboembolic indications, such as prevention of stroke or systemic embolism. 
in adult patients with non valvular af so it is not to be used in patients with mitral valve disease but in non valvular af that are, there are as i told you other causes of af even the thyrotoxicosis you can get af and get it in alcohol is then can get it in uh, even uh, section chronic infection so there are so many causes so non valvular af you can use it uh, <clears throat> for prevention of strokes and uh, systemic embolism important indications are to prevent dvt and pulmonary embolism and prevention of recurrent pe in adults Apexiban, Davigatran, and Rivaroxaban are approved for in the European Union for the prevention of venous thromboembolism in elective hip and knee replacement. So, joint replacement surgery for which only this drug was initially introduced, so that patient need not take uh, low molecular weight heparin uh, by parenteral route. So, that is the idea with which this drug was introduced, and uh, Davigatran was the first drug to introduce, and the river of Soban Geralto also came into market. And uh, the contraindications clinically significant active bleeding. Patient has a bleeding tendency or any bleeding shape, he has a bleeding piles, then uh, you should not use that. Hypersensitivity to these drugs that is common for any drug, and hepatic disease with coagulopathy. severe hepatic cirrhotic patient with already a bleeding tendency which is a contraindication additional risk factors that can increase the risk of bleeding such as other anticoagulants platelet inhibitors and non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs if these drugs are already causing a bleeding tendency then don't add this drug and dabigatran is contraindicated in severe renal impairment because it is mainly 80% is dependent on renal clearance Whereas river of the band and that is the band are not recommended in patients only with a less than 15 ml creatinine clearance per minute. So they can be safely used to some extent in even mild to moderate uh, renal diseases. Concomitant use of uh, the NOCs and inhibitors induces cytochrome P3 A4 and is not recommended due to increase in or decrease in plasma concentration. so don't use any of these two newer drugs together so you can use only one drug along with other antiplatelet or uh, other type of uh, anticoagulants but not two newer anticoagulants together should not be used now what are the advantages two drug reactions or interactions with other drug and uh, you need not avoid any food substances for example you know what are the food substances you have to avoid if you are taking warfarin or acitrone acinetumorol which will counteract their effect sai that uh, you have to avoid leafy vegetables broccoli cauliflower greens any greens any green yeah. leafy vegetable Yeah, okay. they are uh, not to be taken along with warfarin or acitrone. Okay, whereas uh, there is no such contraindication for any food varieties when you take the neural uh, newer word on the pregnant, and uh, they have a predictable pharmacokinetic uh, structure, and uh, most important is the rapid onset of action, and. Uh, Uh, rapid absorption after oral administration and rapid offset also is another important uh, feature which is required in some surgical treatment uh, additionally this rapid onset and offset actions eliminate the need for initial treatment with a parenteral anticoagulant drug as you do for example in a patient whom you want to start uh, anticoagulation for af first we give heparin till the warfarin effect comes on then it we simultaneously start warfarin as well as heparin and then start our withdraw heparin or low molecular weight heparin after two days or three days and the warfarin effect comes into full blow uh, full effect so that is not required in this particular case because these drugs themselves have a very fast uh, uh, onset of action and routine monitoring is not required regardless of body weight age sex race or demographic variation but there are disadvantages with this 
uh, none of the nocs are approved to use during pregnancy or in babies or in children so still approval has not been given for them and they have not yet been applied in patients with mechanical mitral valve issues so increased rate of thromboembolic and bleeding complications or in patients with malignant diseases or those with the anti phospholipid syndrome which is associated with a greater risk of thrombophilic states so these three conditions mechanical mitral valves or valve replacements malignancy and anti phospholipid syndrome they are not been clinically approved diagnosis are not appropriate in some patients who have liver or kidney disease in a very advanced stage some patients cannot afford nocs because it's very very expensive because of that they may have poor compliance with the short acting oral anticoagulants so they may not be able to purchase and continue or uh, uh, be regular in their treatment and the lack of specific antidote is a problem in case of spontaneous bleeding from the overdose and in the case of traumatic injury requiring urgent surgical intervention but what uh, antidote the uh, patient by dr kamakshi i think it is still fully not approved by the fda now this chart will give you an idea about how to compare these four drugs the mechanism of action dabigatran is a direct thrombin all the other three are factor 10a antagonists and the pro drug only dabigatran is a pro drug other three are all directly acting a bioavailability you can see is very low with the dabigatran whereas it is almost 66 50 and 62 with the other three and the half life of dabigatran is the longest 12 to 17 hours whereas here it is 5 to 9 in the young and the elderly it takes a little longer time and the 12 hours and 9 to 11 hours and uh, time to maximum plasma concentration is 0.5 to 2 hours 2 to 4 hours 1 to 4 and 1 to 2 and renal excretion dabigatran has 80% excreted renally whereas the other two three are 35 25 and 50 pedoxaban or 50% elimination liver metabolism dabigatran does not have any liver metabolism whereas the other two pedoxaban and epixaban are metabolized and pedoxaban uh, minimal liver metabolism gastrointestinal tolerability there is uh, incidence of dyspepsia which will occur with uh, dabigatran whereas uh, the uh, other three are well tolerated absorption with food there is no effect increased uh, by 39% and 22% for uh, rivaroxaban and adoxaban and there is no effect for epixaban and the intake with food you should not take it with food for dabigatran you have to take it either before or two hours later and uh, for rivaroxaban you can take it with food and the other two again no no official recommendation dosing dabigatran twice daily rivaroxaban once daily and epixaban twice daily and adoxaban once daily so rivaroxaban and adoxaban they are usually prescribed as a once daily dosing now this again a summary of advantages and disadvantages low drug to drug and food interaction no dietary restriction rapid onset and offset short half life uh, no need for laboratory testing but so in some cases it may be required wide therapeutic window switching patient from low molecular weight or pk to nocs is easy and uh, disadvantages are do not exist standard the uh, standardized test for monitoring it is necessary for monitoring of these drugs in hepatic and renal disease sometimes rapid offset and shorter half life may be considered as disadvantages currently there is lack of antidote even though these two are under experimental thing high cost not enough of experience not many publications are there uh therapy can be initiated without low molecular weight heparin no risk for induced skin necrosis due to the rapid onset so all these are the uh, advantages coming to the dose regimen this is a high risk stroke patient dabigatran 150 mg daily 
and previous stroke patient if you want to use river after band 20 mg qid and high risk bleeding or previous life threatening bleeding rabigatran 110 mg bid apache band 5 mg bd dyspepsia river after band 20 mg apache band 5 mg that is you have to adjust the dosage like this reduce it ea bleeding we have to adjust to 5 mg bad i don't know how it is uh, allowed in ga bleeding and medications complaints problem we go to river after band 20 mg for elderly and impaired renal function apexy band is safe because it has very minimal renal clearance 2.5 mg bad and uh, just to monitor activity and their antidote for excess bleeding so the uh, effect of coagulation test dabigatran there is an increase in direct thrombin test and uh, ect increase in atct or uh, this is recurrent coagulation test and increase in atct no change in prothrombin time and uh, for factor 10a the anti factor 10a is increased there is no change in uh, so thrombin or APTT, no change in direct thrombin or recurrent clot in time. Reversal in emergency for dabigatran, you can give oral charcoal, hemolysis, hemodialysis, uh, plate cell concentrate or activated plate cell concentrate, I mean, uh, prothrombin concentrate, desmopressin, antifibrinoidic agents. And for factor 10 again, the same thing, desmopressin and uh, Acid, all these things can be given. Guidelines to stop and restart. Of course, he mentioned various things. Then there is based on the signal function, pre-operative management, post-operative management, pre-operative management, and post-operative management, depending upon for the major surgery and minor surgery. So this classification about all these drugs will help. But most of them will be stopped. At least 24 hours to 48 hours, and you can restart after 24 hours. So, most of the time, after minor surgery, most of the time you can restart them after 24 hours. Whereas uh, the stopping before surgery will be two days or three days. This is the common guideline. And for major surgery, restarting itself will be only after 48 hours. So, the stopping again will be three days or even four days before for major surgery. So that is the general guideline that you can remember and mention. And switching between the anticoagulants. When you are and a patient is on vitamin K antagonist and you want to switch over to the newer one, once the INR is lower than two, you can switch to the newer drug. And for intravenous in unfractioned heparin to NOAC, after two hours of stopping unfractioned heparin, you can start this oral drug. Similarly, low molecular weight to the newer one. In the next dose of low molecular weight uh, was uh, provided, you can go for this. And switching over from NOC to the uh, vitamin K antagonist, concomitant treatment until INR is 2 or 3. And NOC to parenteral anticoagulant, like uh, unfractioned heparin and low molecular weight. And the next dose of NOC was planned, you can go switch the Instead of giving that NOC, you can give that uh, IV of that. And one NOC to another, and the next dose of NOC as planned, that is longer in case of renal impairment. So if you have started on, say, dabigatran, and you want to switch over to rivaroxaban, when the next dose of dabigatran is due, you can give rivaroxaban instead of dabigatran itself. So switching from N1 one uh, newer anticoagulant to the other is also quite easy. So all these things are the points that I think we can uh, write and include in the answer.